Olandria oh, Tessman. Kirk Buckner. I, I think we're back to our, our usual twosome self. I, 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 we seem to have lost somebody. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know I don't, where Brad went. I, yeah, I, I don't know if you didn't want to be the Heather Locklear in this group anymore. I thought that was a compliment the way we described it, but all of a sudden he seems to have disappeared. Uh, I, I don't I don't know what whatever we're going to do. I, I, I had a proposal for you both on a new thing that I'm working on, but I, I don't know if I should wait for him to magically appear. Well, magically or not, I'm, I'm here. I just oh. wanted to make sure that we were doing MacArthur Park today, right? We are. We, we okay. are doing MacArthur Park. And if we're doing MacArthur Park, then we know there's been multiple versions of this song, right? Correct. And there's Mysterious one Missing best Brad. One, the <laughs> best one that was ever done was by Weird Al Yankovic, was it not? It was. Uh, you are correct, sir. Yeah. Jurassic Park is frightening in the dark. <laughs> All the dinosaurs are running wild. Anyway. Oh, I, I, okay, I, th I thought it was, uh, actually, I didn't know that it was a dinosaur. I thought it was a topical musician this week, Neil Young. <laughs> That's how a T-Rex gives birth. <laughs> through its neck. Through his <laughs> neck, yeah. T-Rexes give birth directly through the neck. Wow. <laughs> I will say this. It's That's a more great... Halloween costume if and you don't want to drink or be comfortable. <laughs> Welcome back, Brad. We're well, getting hey. laid. Getting born is hard. <laughs> wow. It was no, I'm not gonna go there. All right. So before we go into this, I got a couple things I want to jump in here if I can. Uh we've never dedicated a show, and I'd like to do that if I could. Uh -huh. I believe we did dedicate one. Did we? Early yeah. on. You know, who died? Well, I don't remember. You're, you're probably right. You probably did do this. but uh, It was a long time ago. We've been doing this for a while. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I want to dedicate this to a, someone who went number one who we've never talked about. Maybe we will one day. Meatloaf passed away. And uh, I, I, I think that... Uh, Mr. Loaf might appreciate all the effort that we put into all this, and he might agree, he might disagree. I don't know. But before we go into this week's shit show, and it is- Cheers to you, show. Meatloaf. Yes. I'll drink to that, Meatloaf. All right, awesome. I got, I got some rum going on, but this is not after 14 beers. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I've got a proposal for all of you. I've got a new idea for a new show and a new whole project at NotInHallOfFame.com, and I'd like to volunteer you both for it. Now you That's can voluntold. say no. Well, I'm voluntold. No, you can say, you, you can tell me to pound sand. I'm not going to be offended. Because it, it's this involves a bit of work. Now, okay. Chris, yeah, Chris Bourdais and I, who do uh, the, this shit was on national television for this crap, because we're a little bit more polite when it comes to that. Uh, you don't swear as much as I do? I'm sorry. No, actually, Chris is a very, uh, he's a very highbrow individual. So I'm actually a different individual on these shows I do with Chris than I am with the two of you. Because oh. Chris, Chris is classy with the two of you aren't. When you hey. work with him. Yes. Do you get a posh uh, accent when you work with him? Well, he's from Columbus, Ohio. I'm no, sure. But do you get a posh accent then? I do not. Oh, pity. I do not. Because my British sounds like this. But she's not tea, governor. <laughs> so it doesn't really come off very much. But uh, we, we are putting together a crew and we're going to look at, did the Oscars get shit right? Mm. Well, no. That's, well, there we go. Pretty so, much <laughs> never. So we're going to start from sort of our era, kind of a little bit earlier. So from 1970 and each month, we're going to look at the best pictures, actors, all that shit. But we're also going to do the month after the worst. So you're going to bring yeah. in the two lowbrow people to visit with your highbrow friend and make <laughs> him think less of you as a person because of the, the association. Well, the amazing thing is I'm the center of this crew. So I'm either highbrow, lowbrow, nobrow, unibrow. You are the spoke <laughs> which turns our wheel. Yes. So I, I, our wings. I, I would like to see if the two of you would like to join this little group. And again, if you want to sell me to pound sand, pound away. I'd oh, be down for that. All right. I've got to have another excuse to use this mic more often. 
and and the, yeah, and the reason I wanted to sort of like do this publicly in this forum, not to put you to, to put the two of you on the spot, is because I put the shit out there in some of the other committees I've done, and I've got some good people. I also got one guy who maybe wasn't, but that's another story for another time. So if you would like to be a part of this and you think that you would bring an interesting perspective, we want you, you. I want you to want me. I want you I so bad. We are just singing different songs here. We are singing different songs. I want you to want me, but <laughs> I want you to want me too. And you're singing a third song. Yeah, exactly. I figured, why not? You know? We could probably come up with a whole podcast of songs just featuring I Want You. So, All of which are better than the song I chose. Because you see, and I did this because of Brad. Brad, you, who says, like, I'm so lowbrow. Yeah, well, you, because of you, and you, you were trying to elevate things and go into these deep dive conversations on how great these songs were. No, it's how the hell. Not like, yeah, it's, I, it's, I understand now because I, dude, I, I tried, I tried really hard to get through the original that you had suggested and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. You I didn't. can't remember his name. Um, oh, 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 whatever the oh, hell his name yeah. was. Yeah. yeah so, oh. so we've got yeah. Arthur Park, one of the worst songs ever done. Uh, the, the original by Richard Harris, a drunken actor who I, kind of thought brad you, you got a bit of resemblance but apparently i'm told that's wrong um, isn't he elvis dumbledore yes he did play dumbledore okay, brad I, I, does not look like dumbledore i didn't say that he did that's why i said 72 early richard harris apparently but again i don't see the resemblance there like i said in the chat before mm -hmm. um when i had longer hair i was told i looked a little like dave mustaine mm -hmm. and as i responded i'm fat ricky schroeder although if you look at ricky schroeder now I'm actually now better looking than him now. Oh, well done. I didn't think, I've always sort of like been behind him. And now I think I've eclipsed Ricky Schroeder, which I maybe that should be the title of my next book, which I'll promote later. Uh, but I picked this because this song is terrible, but it also comes from somebody who I think is an absolute fucking goddess in Donna Summer. Donna Summer yes. is, she is the goat. I can say so many bad things about this song. Not one bad thing about Miss Summer, about yeah. her vocal range, about the way she treated that song. She took it from a steaming pile of garbage and made it less steamy. So I'd like to say steaming pile of garbage. There are some interesting things about this song. Well, should should um, we talk about the song before we get to Donna Summer? Like how Yes, we I okay. think so. All right, that's where I think you were going. Just wanted to... I, yes, um, I, I saw a quote that it was a wild operetta of, wait, where is it? it it's a great nonsensical fever when he gets to the bit about the cake. Um, it's a ridiculous piece of music, a wild operetta of inar inarticulate regret. Oh, yeah. So if you just listen to the song, it's, it's nonsensical. It, he, all these disjointed images, and then there's a cake melting in the rain. Oh, oh, um, an actual park, apparently, in Los Angeles. Yes, so, now, having said that, the cake does figure into things a little bit. Well, exactly. So the, the song, he literally wrote it. He wrote it about... But Jimmy Webb yeah, is the guy who wrote it, so we should say that. Yeah. He wrote yes. many, 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 many hits. Um, uh, he wrote it... it it's a breakup song. It's a love so tragic love song about the ending of a relationship. Um, he and the girlfriend would have lunch in this park near her work. And all of these weird disjointed images are things he actually saw. The old men playing chess by the trees, the yellow dress, the cake in the rain. Um, and all of it could have been put together in a much more sensical way. Oh yeah, because- the, But it the was first... the 60s. Nothing made sense. Everything's just an acid trip. And- well, to, to that point, Andrea, Jimmy Webb in his Wikipedia page, there's a section that just says drug problems. Yeah. <laughs> that makes so, a lot of sense. 
So the the cake melting in the rain that is the chorus that just keeps coming back over and over, which is a big part of the reason why this song seems so silly, is a metaphor for a crumbling relationship. Which is why he'll never have that recipe, this recipe again. again. Oh no! I can't even do it the disservice of mocking it by singing it. I don't want those lyrics to touch my lips. Okay, but first... I gotta say, Brad brought up the Jurassic Park thing, um, and the Weird Al Jurassic Park, uh, where he goes, "Oh no!" and then gets stomped by a dinosaur is pretty epic. Guaranteed, the whole when thing. that came out, I mean, I had no idea what the hell that was. You know, a represent. giant T-Rex ate the lawyer. I guess it proves they're not that bad. Fantastic <laughs> lyrics. Way better also, than this. Because I got the lyrics up here to the side and the first um, the first stanza, uh, halfway through, stanza. between the parted pages and we were pressed in love's hot fevered iron like a striped pair of pants. <laughs> he had me up until the pants. <laughs> That sounds that sounds like a date that you might. Okay, have so now you're like go you're with pressed. flowers between the pages of a book. Yeah, for and then it's an iron, and now we're pressing pants, <laughs> and we're in a laundromat, and we'll <laughs> never have that detergent again. Oh no! <laughs> but yeah, the whole thing's a mess, but was a significant hit for Richard Harris. I, I think it almost top ties in with something you, we all talked about not that long ago, within the year twenty five twenty five these high-end orchestral things that are kind of nonsensical as music was trying to find itself going in so many different directions, yet mm -hmm. trying, it, it was a weird time of discovery. Now, there was a lot of LSD too. There's that too. There was a lot of LSD. I wish Shatner went number one with this version of uh, Lucy in the Sky. And we'll oh. never have No, that Lucy recipe. in the Sky, the girl, with Again. Kaleidoscope eyes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Although, El didn't Elton John go number one with this? Um, I think so. I don't think Elton yeah, John but... ever touched this one. Elton John mostly sung uh, Bernie Taupin songs. Elton John. Yeah, I, they, I they had a relationship. Strange. But anyway. Uh, so um, Half of Elton John's songs are very strange. So that is true. That is true. But Donna Summer. So this went number one in 79 or 78. Uh, doesn't really matter uh, because Don Donna established herself as the disco queen in 75. Mm -hmm. And some of those songs are massive today. Uh, mm -hmm. Last Dance love. is fantastic still. Yeah. Which was made as exactly. part of a, a shitty comedy. It was part of the, the soundtrack for a terrible comedy that didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. What was? Last Dance. What, what comedy? I can't remember now. Give me a second. Okay. All right. So while you're doing that, so like uh, before that, so there was Love to Love You Baby, her first big hit, but didn't go number one. It, it went number one of the dance. Uh, a song that I think is like one of the greatest electronic songs of all time. Uh, I Feel Love, which oh, is yeah. just mm -hmm. incredible. Uh, anyone who's watching this, just watch her performance on the Midnight Special, mm -hmm. which might be the sexiest thing I've ever seen. Well, it doesn't hurt that this woman has amazing range and she's pitch perfect. Even in live um, live shows, she's just on those notes perfectly. Like you couldn't ask for a better performer. So Last Dance was from the soundtrack to the 1978 film, Thank God It's Friday. That might be one of the worst things that we do as we sort of do that other project I told you about. It um, featured Jeff Goldblum. Weirdly sexy man. Weirdly, Weirdly sexy. sexy man. I don't know. Yeah, there's no. So let's go back to Jurassic Park. He was the most attractive thing in it. Yeah, that's true. Oh, 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 oh yeah, that says a whole lot. <laughs> no, Sam Neill nah, did not. Have I've had me. a weird, a weird crush on Jeff Goldblum since I was a child. I don't know really, what it is. I've heard say that though. Yeah, like, right? he's not yeah. like traditionally attractive at all. And if this guy walked by you on but the street yes. and just was, you know, being Jeff Goldblum. Um, well, well, he didn't, didn't say anything, didn't do anything. There's something, there's nothing there. The moment he Jeff speaks, Goldblum his weird speech pattern finds a way. 
Yeah, exactly. He's like, he's like, but you also need the hands. Got to do the, the hands. I did. Thing. Yeah. Think we're, yeah, but, we couldn't see them. Yeah, well, you know, they were doing it's, something else because I, uh, I agree with Brad on Jeff Goldblum. Ah, yes. When I think about Jeff, I touch myself. I wish that went number one, too. <laughs> <laughs> Hence why season three is going to be, how did this become a hit? Well, we got stuff. almost a year to go. Yeah, well, pretty soon. Pretty soon. We get, we're going to have our disco extravaganza with Saturday Night Fever uh, at some point. I think we all have to sort of like put on our 70s gear and shit like that or something to that. Effect. I've got a lot of costumes. I don't have any 70s gear. Well, you got to hit up the VV Boutique. I guess so. I'll, I gotta find something in Winnipeg, which might be in the '70s anyway, so that's all right. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably. Yeah, shouldn't be hard. But I, I guess we're, where we're looking here, Donna was already a massive star, and for whatever reason, I didn't even look this deep because I, I I don't know why her producers really wanted her. Uh, obviously, I think she wished she she thought this too. I think there was a way. There was also circling back to something that Andrew and I did when we did the Star Wars thing. Yes. Everything was discofied. Mm-hmm. So you're looking at this song and think, well, we can make the Sid disco hit. And they did, although the first half isn't disco. It's only the first minute. Well, at a minute, it switches. Well, it switches a couple of times throughout the whole song. But yeah, it was, it was supposed to be multiple um, change ups and what have you, because that's what. Oh, what was it now? Uh, the writer of the song had actually been yeah. requested to do so. Yeah, Jimmy Webb yeah. Uh, had been requested to do something that had multiple changes and what have you. And then originally it was it was pa uh, passed by the people who had originally asked for it. And that's he had when tried to put together a 22 minute um, epic song and Quite MacArthur sad. Park was the end of it it was the last like four minutes of it but as and long then, as that relationship lasted <laughs> yeah. so then they passed on the full recording and just just produced macarthur park which is so it's quite surprising it actually saw the light of day at all mm -hmm. since it was part of some weird ex musical experiment I wonder if Richard Harris even remembers doing this. I don't know how much drugs he did, but I know he was a fucking alcoholic. Is he still alive? I don't know. Richard Harris? Yeah. Well, when did he do, when was he Dumbledore? I, no, didn't he die and then um, Ian McClellan took over for Dumbledore? Ian McClellan was Gandalf. Oh, that's and, right. Gandalf's Lord of the Rings, though. This is We're, we're talking about a totally... No, I know, but I'm just... Um, I'm just getting confused between my old man actors. All these androgynous old British actors really blend together, don't they? Okay, so Dumbledore was originally played by ba -ba -da -ba -da, Richard Harris for one and two, and then Michael Gambon oh, from so Three to Oh, eight. yes, it was Michael. Yeah, Richard Harris in, uh, in Unforgiven, incredible. He awesome. died at age 72. But he's you he, yeah, in two thousand and he died in two thousand and two. Interesting guy too. I, I was rewatching up uh, this uh, army film called Wild Geese, and they real they wanted him so bad, but because he was such a train wreck, uh, they had to like put he had to like put up a bond or something, just because just because they weren't sure that he could really handle the whole thing, like oh, him, Richard Burton, uh, Roger Moore, just. Well, like one of my all-time favorite war films, but that's neither here nor there because yeah. that has so much to do with Donna Summer, uh, who is my who is the disco queen. Uh, Donna, I, I, I think, and to your point, Brad, uh, she with what she was given, and I think she want, I, I think she wanted to do this, hit it out of the park as much as you can hit this out of a park. Yep, out of a MacArthur Park. I don't <laughs> think that it became <laughs> not all gems. Thank you. Well done. I don't think it became a number one hit because of the lyrics or the songwriting or the composition or anything like that. It was Donna's voice that took this to the, the spot that it deserved. I, oh, sure. I personally think so. Because there's nothing redeeming about this song. There's nothing um, that's that's any good about it. It's it's a breakup song mixed uh, with some psychedelia. Mixed I, with don't, 
I don't agree with you on that. You don't I don't have think to that, agree with me. It's okay. I think that I the song right itself is, it's not great, but there's some, I, I appreciate some of the weirdness of it. Um, I don't, I, I don't think it's as terrible as everyone says. It is. Um, yes. Maybe you're just in the minority, Andrea. Maybe. It doesn't mean I'm wrong, though. It oh, just yeah, it means does. that the majority is trying to force their opinions on me. I I appreciate the fucking weirdness of this song. I, I well, think there's something that else space. maybe that might be a factor. And I just want to throw this out. So we're talking about a song, too, that a lot of other people will remember. Because if a song goes number one back then, or even like now, just whatever capacity it is, it's sales. So yep. now you've got somebody that is established singing a, a established song in a in a song that cannot not is disco but not not really. So you've got a cross appeal. Now it does it sure as hell didn't age well to the point where it blew my mind that this was her first number one. She had four number ones, but this was her first. Mm -hmm. After it, sh it should have been previous to this for sure. Well, I mean, pipes, she absolutely. had she had a number two and a number four, and I yeah. think even a number three before that. Like she had several hits before this song, just right, not but, number but one. This is a bigger hit at that time in terms of sales than "Love to Love You, Baby" and "I Feel Love." Yeah, that's, I think "I Feel Love" should have charted way higher, but yeah, because it just ages better, which is weird considering how electronic it was which probably mm -hmm. felt dated at the time. Like, okay, well, this is a timestamp where this one was this classical throwback, only it really wasn't. It, this was a hodgepodge of shit. Oh, well, that could be a third title of the book. Hodgepodge of shit. Hodgepodge of shit. Oh, maybe make it hodgepodge of feces, just so that, you know, you don't, you don't get censored on any platforms or anything. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, censored on a platform, Neil Young might have a problem with that and then delete it 24 hours later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was just... Nothing wrong with not hearing sad Tiny Tim. Hey, you know what? If he wants to take himself off of Spotify and forego that $2.32 check every three months, well, good on him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, they're not gonna. they're not going to get rid of Rogan, that's for sure. He's too much of a cash cow for them. Way to take a stand, Neil, for 24 hours. <laughs> hey, hey, my, what? I sold my music? Because he did. He sold yeah, he did. 1.5 million, million sold the rights to his music. Yeah. You're a Seriously? protester already. That well, little? That's what I just I read earlier. Today. When? It might not have been reputable. He, but. Uh, a year ago. A year ago, he sold the rights to his music for $1.5 oh, million. Dollars. 50%. What the actual fuck? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, so half his music he doesn't own. So it's like he needs permission, essentially, to say, "Hey, Spotify, take my music down." That's right. Yeah. Your Neil Young impression wasn't on point on that one, Kirk. Hey. Uh, right. uh, okay, okay, Brad, you do it because because you've got that sad tiny Tim thing. Go, you you, you do it. Go. Hey guys, can you take my music down? It sounds like more South Park, though. But yeah. yeah, that sounds more like Cartman than Neil yeah. Young. But okay. You will respect my authority. <laughs> oh, that was good. Okay. Damn, that was good. That was so good. I forgot what the fuck song we were talking about. Oh, Back MacArthur to MacArthur Park. Park. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, with this, I mean, like, I honestly, I honestly think it was that weird. And Andrea and I, and I guess Brad too. Later on, we always talk about the, like an isolated chunk of time. Yeah, where this could possibly work. They wanted to buy anything Donna did, and which was evident by she had three number ones right after. Uh, uh, was it Last Dance? Uh, did uh, Hot Stuff? Did that go number one? Which is a much better song. Uh, I forget. I don't uh, believe Hot Stuff did for some reason, but okay. I could be wrong. Hot but Stuff yeah. also didn't show off her vocal range nearly as well as uh, I Feel Love mm -hmm. or even MacArthur Park. Yeah. I, I know number she went number one with Barbara Streisand with Enough is Enough. Uh, she, had, she managed to get a top 10 out of The Wanderer, uh, like, a, like a cover of that, which I don't think did her any service either. But 
Really? Oh. The Wanderer? Like, they call me the Wanderer? Yeah, sure, the Wanderer. Yeah, I think so. I mean, like, I, I, I could around, be the Wanderer. Around, around, around. Yeah. Yes. That, and, that wouldn't really be her voice. I I can't picture that. My, my memories of Donna, because uh, the disco, my consciousness sort of, like, really entered after disco ended. And I remember, and God, I wish my mom was still sort of at a point where she could listen to stuff like this, because she... This would be a far more PC thing because she would listen to everything I do. Mom, I love you. Uh, but anyway, uh, she would come up with these gems sometimes. So um, Dolly, I remember as a kid, so I would have been 11, so like 83, 84. Dolly Parton had a, a ver- she tried to bring back the variety show. And then mm-hmm. Donna was a guest. And this is point, this was like 82, 83, where Donna was like, Okay, disco's dead, and she she was fucked. Her and the Bee Gees just didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And then I remember my mom saying, "Donna, this isn't going to work." <laughs> <laughs> well, has there she ever been any artist that artists successfully yeah. navigated from disco into something else? The thing is, I, there's there really not that I can think of, but her voice and her talent, she could have easily migrated to something else not yeah, country they, they she doesn't have a country voice no they wouldn't let her at the time because the beach mm. like if you were disco you were screwed and once they once the 1981 hit did she go back to musical theater because that was her background well she wasn't done i mean she had comebacks i mean she works hard for the money uh I the have for my money. Yeah, yeah. and which but it took, she had to basically apologize for being the disco queen until it was okay to be the disco queen again. It would look at the, look at the Bee Gees. How, how they essentially were, they were screwed. Yeah, it didn't matter what they put out, they could have put out anything in, in 1981, and it wouldn't have mattered. Mm-hmm. Ooh, between '86 and '89, she released. Um... Uh, an album, All Systems Go, didn't achieve gold, and the title track, All Systems Go, was only released in the UK, and it peaked at number 54. Yeah. I mean, she got, she was a victim of a genre she helped create that just got dumped on so bad, and yeah. unfairly, unfairly uh, so. No, not unfairly. Disco sucks. Disco does not suck. No, really? that's your opinion, Brad. And you're entitled to your wrong opinion. <laughs> oh, wow. That was well, a she just get me back to what I said before. There. I think she might have caught it. Yeah. She might have caught it because I said yeah. I, re- I respect her right to be wrong. And I think she's uh, come around with that and spanked me in the ass. Hey, yeah. you know what? What goes around comes around. Yeah, apparently. I'm going to have a welt there for a while. Yeah, you like it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, now I felt uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, Kirk. I'll spank you after. If you can get past the ass hair, you're p- more power to you. Oh, it looks like you got buckwheat in a leg lock, eh? <laughs> I was not expecting a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> U- usually I'm two chess moves ahead on this, and uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Uh, I, I think we sort of successfully examined this. I was trying to figure out before, like, where the hell are we going to go? But that's where we have these conversations. I did not think we'd be able to sort of figure out how this went number one. Kirk, I, figured, I don't think we will ever have this recipe again. Full circle, <laughs> right around like that. She's coming around with the paddle again. Somebody else is going to get whacked. <laughs> She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. What a dirty song comes. that is. But... Donna, uh, you left us too soon. I wish you were alive to see you inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I, again, think you were one of the sexiest women ever. And I don't know that even today you get the due for what you are as a true queen. Just true queen. Oh, yeah. She was absolutely fantastic at what she did. And while I don't have much of an appreciation for disco, I can completely appreciate the fact that she was able to step up on stage, live band, hot mic, live backup singers, and just destroy. Oh, okay, well, you know what? She, that's tough to do with disco. She could have done that 
so let's say take that in the year 10 years before she could have been the leader of supremes she could have been a linda Ron, not not that i'm a big linda ronset fan but she could have done that she mm -hmm. could have done everything afterwards she could have been today's lady gaga Oh, she could absolutely. have been today's Adele. Yes, Ooh, hundred percent. I praise. Yes, she could have done that if she really yeah. wanted to. And I hope, if anything, maybe there's a few other people that are listening to this, watching this, that are just saying, "Well, here's to you, Donna." Uh, with that, I, I cede the floor to Mr. Nelson, who is the person who gets to decide what we're doing next week. Well, in in um, honor of Mr. Loaf, who did wind up uh, passing recently, I, I think it's only fair that we do one of his number one songs. Actually, the only one that Meat Loaf ever did that hit number one, mm -hmm. and that would be uh, because we've already dealt with that. Oh no, sorry, we've already dealt with these. We've already dealt with these, and those are the things we can deal without. Now it's time to get onto that and figure out what that is because. We I would do, do anything for love, but I won't do that. Meet Love. Uh, the, the comeback album that was, shit, 13 years in the making. Yeah, hey, Batter to Hell, part one and part two are the best things that Meet Love ever did. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Neighborhood fell flat. There's another one in there that I don't remember that was just, it fell even flatter. Nobody remembers. Um, no, and so, and don't get me wrong. I mean, on uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, Hot Patootie, Great song, great voice. The man has pipes. So let's get into that next week. All right. You know, I've never seen that movie. <gasps> the hell is wrong with you? I don't know. Well, Friends off. A lot of things, but. Kurt, okay, then your, your homework. homework is to go watch Rocky Horror. 100%. All right. This is required if we are to maintain friendship. I just want really? to see you okay. shiver with anticipation. I don't get this. I don't I know, get but you what will. you're trying to you do. That'll, that'll land later <laughs> on when you're watching. All right. All right. Well, it might that. make you a little uncomfortable for your homoerotic um, attraction to... Brad? No. Well, nobody can blame you for that, Kirk. But no, to Tim Curry. <laughs> to Tim Curry. Like, okay, well, that, that movie awakened things in me that I wasn't ready for when I first saw it. Well, I, I want to know who Andrea thinks I'm attracted to right now. No, Tim Curry. Oh, okay. Tim I, Curry is what I was going with. Frank and Furter. All right. Uh, I, I, to, to me, Tim Curry is the guy from Clue. So No, Tim Curry is the guy from Willow. Tim Curry is the guy from Legend. The legend, DP not from Willow. Legend. legend. Whoa. Wow, I dropped the ball. Sorry. Right, well, you I've did. Never, I've never seen that either. You've never seen Legend? No. Oh. Tom Cruise's best work? I've seen I Am Legend. <laughs> no, not the same. Also a good movie, but not the same. Um, Kirk, we're Legends going to out. have to... Maybe that's a podcast. 80s classics that Kirk hasn't watched. Oh, yeah. We could go off on that. Oh, yeah. That, that, it's a side piece with, uh, with, with all, with, to, to all the girls that Brad and I masturbated before. <laughs> not at the same time, apparently. Well, maybe. Might Just have not been. together in the same room. We don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to play Soggy Biscuit with you. With me? With you. Oh, okay. Hey, how about let's go back to the topic at hand. Oh. So, no, hey, I'm Kirk, you wrote a book, this, right? Before we go there. So, wait, Brad, if, 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 if that's the case, I'm the Julio to your Willie Nelson, right? Because all the girls the I've loved before. Right. Oof, do, no, no, it's my door. Yes, I'm Julio. Yeah. Julio all right, and Willie. Hey, Kirk, Kirk, did you write yeah. a book? Yeah, I wrote a book. I wrote a book. Oh, okay. I see where we're going here. Yeah, I wrote a book. <laughs> I wrote a book. Let's promote some shit of mine. Andrew, you're promote. subtle like a brick. Yeah. That's on our Tinder profile, too. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I wrote a book. Pro wrestling fans. Chavo, Guerrero, Sr., man, myth, legend. Buy his book. I helped him write it. You can find that on Amazon.com. Also, all the proceeds, if you don't like me, that's okay. They don't go to me. They go to my wife. <laughs> His wife right? is lovely. You should support her. Yeah, because Amazon rejected me three times. So it had Also because she supports him. That's also true. <laughs> that's also true, but that won't help anyone who doesn't like me. But anyway. Love but you, yes. Pauline. 
Yes, <laughs> but it, uh, Chavo Guerrero, instant classic. Uh, what I mentioned earlier in the show, Chris Bernay and I, we do a show, it's sort of a companion piece, you could say, which is this crap was on national television. I just finished, uh, I won't say editing because I don't edit much. All I really do is sort of like put up a bunch of pictures on the top left and go through all that stuff. And we looked at Are You Hot? A 2003 pilot, or not a pilot. It was a show that lasted six episodes on ABC. Ooh. It was shit. It might be the worst. I, actually, I don't know that it's the worst reality show. It was the most boring, which is the worst thing that any show can be. Reality, so Basically drama. just Instagram, but on TV? More or less. That's kind of what we said. <laughs> like the original uh, Facebook. It's basically just hot or not. Yeah, it was basically swiping right, and that's kind of what they did. Uh, and we wound up having this great discussion. And then through that, which is kind of where Chris and I afterwards were shooting the shit for an hour, and then we said, you know, we should come up with something else. And we did. And Chris is a great guy. Uh, so there's that. Evan Nolan and I, we do our weekly show. It's all about Halls of Fame. Hey, this is not HallofFame.com. So obviously, we talk about Halls of Fame. Huh, there's a shock for you, huh? So we do that. Check that out. I'm sure I do a bunch of other stuff because I, God damn it, I don't remember everything I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot. The sad thing is all the shows that happen on this network, network, I have a network. I'm in all of them. So if you don't like me, I guess this isn't going to go too good. Yeah. How about you crawl back in that crevice that you came from, Kirk? Kirk they can always, <laughs> They can always show up here for you realize they don't like you and then just stay for me actually andrea is the one that we've just that we've learned is a big hit in the Dude, i've been on three of these give me a second i'll show some nipple <laughs> honestly you two are like basically the same person just in different area <laughs> wow. codes so i'm the He's only one who has the diversity in area codes. <laughs> you're diverse andrea I'm more diverse than you two middle-aged white dudes. What, because you're a middle-aged white chick? Yes. <laughs> the chick makes me more diverse. <laughs> Brad, okay, Brad and I were acting very bi-curious. Aren't we part of some community now? No. No. <laughs> not, not until you actually commit. <laughs> well, that ain't happening. <laughs> no. I mean, when when did you make out but... when you eventually meet in person, then we can talk. No. Oh, we're we're making out. <laughs> no, it's gonna be like kissing a mirror. Oh yeah. Hey, it's like a kiss from a no. me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Should we close? We should end this now. <laughs> All right. We've already gone too far. Because next week we won't do that. We won't. <laughs> no. I won't. Good night, everybody. I heard that you have, but anyway. <gasps> That's Bye in our everyone. private chat, Kirk. Bye. Oh, the dancer. Sorry. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>